While everybody knows about the severe respiratory complications that can sometimes happen from COVID, as well as many of the other symptoms as potential side effects associated with both the wild virus as well as the vaccine, including things like chronic fatigue, including things like pericarditis and myocarditis. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was some concerns talking about things like female reproduction and female cycles, as well as fertility issues overall, but there really wasn't much talk since then. But now there is some new research about male fertility. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So I know that so many of us are over COVID, over talk about the vaccine, but you know, COVID still is around. I was recently at a wedding in California where both of the spouses ended up catching COVID a couple days afterwards, as well as other friends and family members at the event. So it was kind of a spreader event, we think. Um, and a few people, but thankfully everybody's doing okay. And furthermore, at our own synagogue, here in Tampa, Florida, a couple of weeks ago at a memorial service, it seems as if 20 people or so ended up catching COVID, although thankfully nobody got overly sick. But I did recognize that almost everybody who did catch COVID this time were people who had the vaccine but had never had COVID before. So we know we talked about about hybrid immunity and how that type of protection and, and wild protection is certainly providing a strong level of protection for a lot of people, especially for getting sick. Okay. Now, because of that, though, um, I, why are we talking about this now? Well, because of these new research that came out about fertility. Now, what is the importance of, hum of healthy fertility? Well, my story for that comes way back to when I first started working with kids with autism. And then about 15, 17 years ago, some of the families who we had recovered saw significant improvements with their children. Then said to me, hey, can we do some of these different types of tests like vitamin D? like zinc, like tending to the microbiome that maybe would help us have a healthy baby um, as well as ourselves be healthy. And can we do this before we try to conceive? And of course, that's kind of how my, I got started in my whole preconception to infancy project that I've talked and published about. Now, some of these um, families, despite going through these biomedical interventions, sometimes they were still having fertility issues. And they and then we would look to see what else we could do, things like MTHFR, um, other types of clotting issues that can cause um, miscarried abortions and those types of things um, happening spontaneously. Um, and so at the time, much of my focus was on the women's health, the women's nutrition, inflammation, mental health of the, uh, as well. But of course, there was also the sperm. Right. And although that is just one cell contributing for everything that helps ha happens after that, of course, that's a really, really important cell. And of course, that goes a very long way with the fertility um, possibility of, of a couple. So that's why we're talking about this now. Now, um, obviously, I've shared before, you know, on, on this channel about COVID side effects the, in terms of the vaccine and the long side of uh, symptoms that are associated with the virus overall. Um, and I've also talked about how I believe that the reason why we see so many similarities in terms of people who are reporting vaccine reactions, but also longer term COVID issues was due to inflammation that some people do not control inflammation in their body as well as other people do. And this can lead to longer term things. And I, time after time, again, with a myocarditis, pericarditis in both populations. So now, as far as this goes, um, that may not be the case when it comes to sperm. OK, now sperm analyses can typically be done on almost anybody at any laboratory. Um, and there were studies that were done originally looking at the sperm quality, quantity, et cetera, and how it may have been impacted by a COVID. OK, now, but there really wasn't any long term research that were done about this, let alone the vaccine. So just as a point of reference to explain all of this, it takes approximately 78 days from a sperm to first be formed in, in order for it to be to mature and to be able to be released and to be fertile okay so looking more than 90 days after the after the covid infection for instance that would let us know if there was long term implications since anything earlier could have been measuring sperm that were already made okay now so there was a recent um, study um, that was performed at the European Society of Human Reproduction and, em and Embryology at their annual meeting. And a Dr. Rocio Nunez Calon, 
um, sci- who is the scientific advisor for the UR International Group, uh, the Scientific Reproduction Unit in Madrid. And what they did in their group is they reported on 45 different individuals, different, the, these were all unvaccinated men. So these were people who just were in the, getting the wild virus, but had no vaccine in them that could potentially be another variable. Um, and the, they were all done as part of just a regular fertility evaluation because they were having fertility issues that had nothing to do with COVID. But obviously at fertility clinics, that's what they do. They, they, they analyze the sperm. And of course, that report is available to, for making future comparisons. Okay. Now, um, all of the people who had the sperm um, analyzed, who then caught COVID. Now, these were all people who had mild wild. So they didn't get very severe. These were just mild cases. So there wasn't tremendous amount of of, uh, serious effects being uh, symptoms being seen in these individuals. Now, um, all of the post-infection sperm tests were collected. First, they, they collected prior to 100 days, but then there were a subset of people who had the collection done after 100 days. And of course, if we're talking about 78 days in terms of the maturing of sperm, anybody who was tested 100 days after would, again, be all new sperm. OK, now, in terms of the, the semen that was collected, OK, during those first 100 days, they did find after the infection that there was a 20 percent reduction in overall sperm volume, the liquid. So that includes not just the sperm, but the, all of the semen, the other material, the other uh, things that make up the ejaculate fluid. Um, sperm counts themselves, the number of the sperm decreased by 37.5%. And then the number of live sperm, so not all sperm make it to the final end to do the final journey up the, uh, you know, once it's, uh, you know, to make conception happen. The number of live sperm decreased 26% compared to beforehand. And the motility, the ability for the swimming of the of it decreased 9%. And this was all within the first 100 days of get, of having COVID. Okay. Now, in the samples that were collected 100 days later, so all new sperm, the, the, the decrease in both the quality and the quantity of the sperm remained low. It did not rebound. Okay, so now the, why is that? Why may that happen? And what the uh, the study authors had high hypothesis, which I think makes a lot of sense, um, was because they believed that there was inflammation caused by the virus that damaged the germ cells. So germ cells are what eventually develops into the active sperm cells. Okay, so they start off like at a premature, if you will. And this is what kind of keeps on cranking out the sperm. Um, and, and, that, and that would damage those cells. But it also was felt that the inflammation reduced testosterone um, um, levels by affecting the cells that make testosterone, right? So not just the, um, the, 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 uh, the sperm cells, but other cells in the, for, in the uh, fertility that make testosterone. OK, so that obviously is concerning because we know, of course, people can you know, not that people can't get um, pregnant, but, you know, maybe that's why some people are having difficulty getting um, um, conceiving um, after they've had COVID in the male sense, at least. OK, so now what about the vaccine? Because as I hypothesize that I see a lot of similarities between some of the side effects from the vaccine versus what people get with some of the more significant issues with COVID um, in terms of long COVID, especially. Now, in the Journal of Medical Virology, they recently published a study that looked at this from the vaccine. And it was called The Effects of COVID-19 Vaccine on Semen Parameters, a Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis. Now, if you're not familiar with what a meta-analysis is, this is very powerful. Because what they do is they take a whole bunch of studies on a particular topic. They have very specific statistical analyses where they will weed out bad studies to first in the first place. But of course, no one study is typically done exactly like another study. So there are advanced statistics that epidemiologists can do in order to put a bunch of those studies together to come up with more power, more patients to give a more thorough response. OK, now in this particular study, um, they looked they there were 12 studies that were finally included so all the other studies were weeded out 12 studies were looked at and there were 914 individuals pretty big number that eventually was being looked at and this and what they looked at was similar to the other semen volume sperm concentration sperm motility also the sperm morphology with you know the, the individual changes in the in the shape of the sperm cells themselves um as well as the size of them and what they found though is that for all of these parameters there was no significant change before versus after the covid vaccine 
Okay, so that's data. Do with it what you want, but it is kind of interesting to see that that um, inflammatory response that we, that can happen from the vaccine didn't appear, at least in these 914 individuals over 12 studies, to affect those people's sperm function. Okay, so in terms of what is my take on all of this, um, this comparing the um, the, va- the virus compared to the vaccine when it comes to sperm health. Okay, so based upon the information, the information that we have here. Male fertility does appear to be affected by the virus, but not the vaccine. Now, why is this so important to have a well-tamed immune system? So this kind of goes back to everything that we talk about with functional medicine. Of course, anything that we can do to optimize our immune systems in that Goldilocks sense where we don't want our immune systems to overreact, that's hyperinflammation. And we don't want our immune systems to be weak. That's what gets us sick. But what are all the things? Again, we've talked about the vitamin D, the zinc, the importance of the intestinal microbiome, the levels of the good flora and anything bad that could be growing that could create more inflammation. Right. As well as hyperinflammatory food. So even when a person gets sick, you know, we talk about don't eat high sugar, avoid dairy, those types of things. So a anti-inflammatory, low inflammatory diet, especially in the time of and after getting sick, may be particularly helpful. In reducing this. Now, I don't know. That is a hypothesis. But of course, hypotheses should be based upon logic and understanding um, of the science that's involved. And then hopefully someone will go on to actually prove it or disprove it in a study. So there you go. Hope you learned something. Have a nice day.